All right, this is Ryan for Better Tattooing, and today we're going to tell you why you shouldn't use antibacterial soap to care for your tattoo. All right. Okay, now that's over with. Um, oh no, Ryan's going to say something that's going to contradict the entire industry. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. <laughs> um, all of us at Better Tattooing agree the use of antibacterial soap to care for a tattoo is not right. Right? Um, there's a reason why. Um, and I'm not saying, we'll just get this out of the way. Let's, let's go from the beginning here because I just want to jump right into some complex things, but I probably shouldn't do that because this is for YouTube and well. Right. Um, super busy outside today. I apologize if you're picking up all that background noise. But anyways, antibacterial soap is great in a lot of ways, right? It kills bacteria. It's antibacterial. So when is that good? Um, and let's do this first, right? Number one, let's just do this little stars around it. Get some asterisks going on there. Okay. And I can't multitask. I'm super tired today, so I apologize if my energy is a little to start off with here. Um, and we're writing this big because this is realistically, this is when we want to use it, before your tattoo. Um, why do we want to use it before our tattoos? Well, because when we go to do the skin prep, which we all should be doing if we're going to be giving someone a tattoo, tattoo artists, uh, and clients can do this as well before the tattoo if they want to try to make sure that their, their skin is going to be extra clean to decrease the chances of you picking up an infection. I feel like I'm going to burp. <clears throat> Apologize for the lack of professionalism. And the noise. I'm just all apologetic today. <laughs> Whatever. Um, before, before the tattoo, when we do skin prep on a client, we're going to try to be like as careful as possible, right? We're trying to use aseptic techniques to make sure that people are not going to be getting sick, picking up an infection during the procedure, um, or taking something home that will get them infected later, right? So that's why we sterilize our needles, you know, and use single use things and like, you know, be clean when we're doing a tattoo. So antibacterial soap is great before it. Like I use product, um, it's called HibiCleanse. It's like a medical grade, um, like cleaner, anti everything. <laughs> it's a pink soap basically. Um, it's got, uh, what's that called? Like chlorexidine? I, I remember how to pronounce it, but whatever, uh, some people can have a sensitivity to it. So um, you always wanna do a patch test before you try to apply it, just prefacing all this stuff. Um, but I'll use, I'll, I'll use HippoCleanse on someone's body. So when I'm going to get set up, what I'll do is I'll have them come in, um, you know, all the paperwork's done, the, the place is already cleaned, it's sanitary, right? Like it's, we're not tattooing in a, a, a deli. Like this is tattoo shop quality clean, right? Uh, so they'll come in, they'll sit down, and I will take some of the HippoCleanse, get it on their arm, lather it up, and I let it sit for, you know, one to two minutes. That way it has a chance to get on top of the skin, kill everything that's on there that could possibly uh, lead to an infection later on. Um, if you don't use like HIPAA cleanse, I mean, you can use like dial soap, the red stuff. Um, if people have a sensitivity to that as well, just plain old alcohol works really well. I might as well write this up here in case people want to take notes along with me. Uh, HIPAA cleanse. This is one I'll use. This will be dial soap. Right. And three will be, and we'll put an asterisk next to this as well, um, alcohol. Um, and we'll do this because we're gonna use alcohol no matter what. And I wanna make sure that we've just set that aside. It's not just like we can't use it, but just in case. Anyways, um, we're gonna use these two products, right? So what we do is like get somebody to come sit down, put it on their arm, let it sit for two minutes, go about setting up our things, you know, like pull out the needles in front of them and break them so that they know that they're clean, never used, and they can check the dates to make sure they're not expired. Your client, that is. Um, and then like when you're all done, finished setting up, you know, a minute or two later, come back and rinse that arm off, right? Distilled water, spray bottle, lots of paper towel at the bottom, just kind of soak it, rinse it off, make sure all the bubbles are off there. The skin is prepped and ready to go, right? And that's when we'll do our alcohol. So there's two steps to this normally to get people cleaned up before we do a tattoo. We'll do our antibacterial scrub and then we're gonna use a desiccant, right? Alcohol, we put it on the skin, it dries it out, makes it shrink. And we do that because when we apply our stencils, What's gonna happen is the skin is gonna be plumped up by that stencil applicator, right? It's got a, a moisturizer inside of it, which will end up pulling more of that whatever color stencil paper uh, pigment you use into the skin more effectively, right? If we skip this step, usually you're gonna have um, a stencil that's applied to the skin that's gonna come off really easily. So use your alcohol before that, right? It also has double effort, or does double duty because it also works as, you know, uh, a cleanser on the skin, preps it, make sure they're not gonna be getting um, possibly something injected into the skin 
that is living on top of it with the needles that goes in. That's why like if you go to get blood taken, IV, something like that, they do an alcohol scrub before. Just to make sure the skin's clean. Yeah. So this is this is what we'll do, right? We're trying to make sure that we're using clean techniques before the tattoo is done to decrease the chances of you getting an infection, right? Um, some people will use antibacterial stuff. We'll do this in there, right? During question marks. Um, I don't agree with using it during the tattoo. Um, usually I try to use an oil-based soap that's really good at like keeping the pigment off the skin like a green soap, unless somebody has an allergy to lavender, always check for allergies before you do a tattoo. Um, but I'll, I won't use any bacterial soap for the most part because it, if people are sensitive to it, but it's only if their skin is broken, you'll start using it on them and their skin can inflame a lot. It tends to dry out the skin a little bit more. Um, and then just using too much stuff on top of the skin, you know, any type of product, especially if it's like a medical grade disinfectant is not going to be good for the health of the skin in general, right? So some people will, and I'd say like reserve that for maybe if you're in a situation or space that is not possibly as clean as like a very controlled environment like a tattoo shop, right? Um, if you're on the road in a convention, I might put a little bit of, you know, stuff into my rinse cup or something, you know, to make sure that like, I'm just trying to keep things clean a little bit more as we're going, especially if there's a greater chance of things getting into the tattoo, right? So this is use you know like be be responsible just do it whenever you don't have to do it during the tattoo but whatever um anyways but this is where we're here right after care um using antibacterial soaps on your tattoo while it's healing in the aftercare is is it has a negative impact on the actual healing of the the wound right because there's stuff that lives on the outside of our bodies all the time. It's constantly there, right? It's called the microbiome. Let's change our colors here. Oh, drop that one. Okay, microbiome as a bus passes by. If you want to learn more about the microbiome, just like Wikipedia is your friend, you know, go do some study, check out the articles on this stuff. This is a new thing that people are working on in medicine, science and stuff, trying to better understand it because you can influence someone's health by affecting the things that live on them, right? Or in them, the stomach, you hear of like probiotics and prebiotics, right? The stuff that lives in your body that, you know, breaks down things and helps like you digest stuff. There's things on the outside of your body that protect you as well from getting infections, right? Because there's a constant war that's going on between, you know, the viruses, bacteria, bugs, all the stuff that's living on the outside of your body that's microscopic that you can't see. And that's uh, that gentle balance between them is called homeostasis, right? Like we want a homeostatic environment where things are in balance. They're keeping each other in control because when it gets out of balance, that's when we get sick, right? That's what we call, especially if you have your microbiome is kind of destroyed on the outside of your wound after you get a tattoo, you're going to end up with an opportunistic infection. We can air quote the hell around that, right? An opportunistic infection is where one specific strain of something, or maybe multiple, uh, that end up getting into a wound because like the stuff outside, that war that's going on keeping everything in balance has fallen out of, you know, whack. Something has become greater than or has overpopulated an area. It starts to infiltrate things like wounds, like a tattoo tattoo, scratch, cut, things like this, surgical wound. Um, and then you end up getting sick from it, right? Um, so that's what we're trying to avoid. And by using antibacterial soaps on top of your healing tattoo, you're constantly disturbing the microbiome, right? You're gonna increase the chances of you picking up an opportunistic infection by basically nuking the playing field every time that you wash it, right? There's always gonna be a chance for a new, stronger, maybe even resistant strain of something to start coming in and then get a chance to infect your wound. So if you're washing your tattoo with antibacterial soap three times a day, chances are that you are going to be opened up to a greater amount of, uh, a greater chance of infection, right? Um, at the same time, even if it isn't gonna become a systemic infection, right, like sepsis or something like that, um, your body's gonna have to work harder at the wound area to fight off infections while it's healing, which is going to decrease the quality of the heal, right? It's gonna have to work harder to do the same thing because it's to have to fight this, <laughs> like hold back the invaders from breaking down the walls. Um, that was stupid. And so you, you don't want to use it with your tattoo, right? The, the best thing to do is to take a product that you already own, right? If you are a tattooer, you should be asking your client what they do with their skin already, right? Ask them if they have a skincare routine. Things like, we'll do questions, right? For clients. One should be, what's your skin 
can't multitask. Care routine, question mark. Um, this is the biggest thing, right? So like if you go to take a shower, what type of soap do you use? Right, do you use a poof, loof, a sponge, rag, anything like that? Or you just use bar soap that you rub on your body? You know, whatever. Um, whatever your routine is going to be, I'm not shaming you, whatever. It's, um, my face just made that because I was like, why would you do that? Um, <laughs> Whatever your routine is, if you already have something that you're using on your skin, it's going to influence not only like what your skin is able to like deal with, right? But it influences the microbiome because they learn to live with this stuff too. If it's fragranced, if it's not, I don't care. Usually what we want to see is things that don't have exfoliants, you know, scrubby beads, things like that, sparkles, whatever else. But if it's, if it's already scented, like use Axe body wash to wash your body, which, uh, um, that those products are going to be absorbed into your skin and it takes you know sometimes a couple weeks to a month for them to actually be shed out because your skin's always shedding right for it to push out so if you change a product while you're healing a tattoo that other stuff that you already were using is still in your skin it's just now you're adding something else that's going to change the microbiome on the top of the skin which will influence uh, you know you possibly picking up a, an infection faster because you're disturbing that delicate balance on the outside of your skin, right? So if somebody already is just like, yeah, I use a body wash, blah, 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 right? Okay, cool, we'll keep using that with the healing of your tattoo because your body's already accustomed to it, right? Your immune system is accustomed to it. Um, but maybe just don't use a rag, loofah, poof, sponge, whatever, right? On the area of the tattoo. And that'll help increase the chances of it, you know, not scarring, not getting, you know, infected, not, not, not. Um, <laughs> Sorry. And then the other thing we want to do, I mean, past the standard skincare routine, I'm going to have to write this, is if somebody like gets out of the shower, or maybe like once or twice a day, they put lotion on, find out what that product is, right? We're going to want to make sure that they keep using it. That's going to be the best way to like ensure a quality heal because you're not disturbing the microbiome, right? Antibacterial soap is bad. It is great before a surgery, before a tattoo, before this, but you don't want to use it when you're healing a wound because it's just going to make things take longer. And with tattooing, the longer a wound takes to heal, the less likely it is to look good in the future. That's it for today. Hey, hey, hey.